after Fei Lao's betrayal, subsequent manhunt, and then the revelation of her working undercover behind enemy lines, there have been a number of encrypted comms that have been discovered. Called insurance policy, they provide fragmented pieces of intel about what she has managed to uncover, and a lot of it seems to be pointed towards Natalia Sokolov, Calvin McManus, and something called the Hunter Program. What can I do for you now, Schaefer? I'm just wondering where we got that support from. That's need to know, Schaefer. And frankly, you don't need to know. I'm not comfortable with how things went down with Dusk. She was a patriot. She was a rogue and a thorn in your side that Cal helped us remove. Cal isn't Calvin McManus, is he? How do you know that name, Schaefer? The Secretary of Homeland Security isn't exactly a secret agent, Natalia. Miss Sokolova. I'm sorry. You're right. Miss Sokolova. I don't know what kind of operation Cal is running, but... I'm not comfortable with this kind of support. Noted. Schaefer, I know this has been difficult, but you have a habit of losing sight of the bigger picture and remembering your role in this organization. You could learn a lot from the people you are working with. Here we have Schaefer confronting Natalia Sokolova. Though he asks her if Cal is Calvin McManus, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Faye has already told him this. I think he just wanted to hear it from her. At this point, Schaefer not only has one foot out the door, but he's also working with Fei Lao towards whatever her major plan is to expose the true enemy and their intentions. But Natalia is a smart lady. She is more than likely to be aware of where Schaefer's head is at, especially given their last few conversations, which is why it isn't completely surprising to see what comes for Schaefer next. Thank you for cleaning house. No problem. You were right to ask for support, and as much as they were your problem, as former division agents, they were my responsibility. I appreciate you saying that, and being accountable. I was worried you were going to say I owed you a favor. Not a favor, a replacement. Thanks to Schaefer's little sideshow at Coney Island last night, I'm down a man. This unit is hard to find suitable replacements, given the current state of things. You want to steal from my talent pool? Not steal. Just borrow from time to time as the need arises. You already have a few of my operatives in your organization. They just haven't made themselves visible to you. Impressive. Mind telling me which one of your wolves is in Black Tusk uniform? All in good time. For now, I'd like you to submit a short list of potential replacements. My brother, Felix Sokolov, Bridget Douglas, Dustin Xavier, Alicia Coswald, and he might be a little young, but Jack Bonnie. Let's start with Bonnie. By cleaning house, they're obviously referring to the hunter that McManus lent out to Natalia to deal with the troublesome rogue agents that Schaefer had spoken to her about previously. Interestingly, McManus was happy to do it, considering these agents as his responsibility. But we need to remember that we took down that particular hunter, and now McManus wants him replaced. This unit, as McManus refers, the hunters, obviously isn't all that large. While Natalia expresses concern around losing some of her talent, McManus mentions that there are already hunters secretly within the Black Tusk ranks. It looks like engagements with the Black Tusk going forward will see us facing more of a mix between the BTSU and the Hunters, like at the end of Countdown. This conversation finishes with Natalia listing off a number of potential candidates for the Hunter program. Felix Kestrel Sokolov, Bridget Viper Douglas, Dustin McManus Xavier, Alicia Cersei Coswold, and Jack Bonney. All of these individuals were rogue agents who had sided with the Black Tusk, all apart from Jack Bonney. So while they may have been better trained to work with the SHD gear and had more experience, McManus obviously has no intentions of working with former agents. You get to New York all right? I'm in. Would have been easier with Shade or Dusk, but we know why they were unavailable. Be careful with this guy. I've set up far away from him. If he gets near me, we can confirm that I'm his target. This is wrong. We've worked all the angles. This is the only way to be sure. 
I don't like using you as bait. It's fine. It'll be fun. Your agents have been after me for months. It'll make them feel good to take me alive. Yeah. I just hope they show a little restraint. They have a tendency to go for headshots. Hey, that's why I wear this adorable helmet. <sighs> good luck, Schaefer. Won't need it. They'll face this hunter and know something isn't right. Kelsel will order the agents to apprehend you for questioning. And you can brief her on McManus and Sokolova. We can't let them finish their project. And I'll only tell Kelso she's the only one we can be sure isn't rogue. I trust her with my life. She's the best agent I've ever met. She's smart and capable. And even if she likes to blow things up, she will be too curious to let you die. I hope you're right. Good luck with Chicken Hawk. I guess it's time to get arrested. Just don't blow my cover when they bring you in. What if they come after you next? Don't blow my cover. So I would say that this was the last time they spoke to each other, and prior to the previous comms that we just went through. Schaefer has just arrived in New York, after the rest of his lieutenants have been taken down, presumably in preparation for his operation on Coney Island. From this we can confirm that it was a part of Faye's plan. He was always meant to be captured, and more importantly, to show them this hunter. Obviously all of these conversations with Natalia had eventually led him to being hunted down too, like the rest of his rogue agents. But, they were playing it pretty hopeful with this plan, as there hasn't been too many others that we have taken alive, because his next step was to inform Kelso of more information around Natalia and McManus. Even Kelso hasn't exactly been known to hold back, so it was a pretty risky game to play. But I guess that's why these comms are called insurance policy. Faye left these behind just in case Schaefer ended up being killed. Lucky thing too, as we find out in the final cutscene, he's been in a coma for weeks now. We need to talk. Oh, so you're talking to me again. Your buddy's in New York too busy to take your call? I finished decrypting Lau's insurance policy. Did she tell you why she did it? There's no way she can justify joining Black Tusk and assassinating the president. <sighs> when did everything get so complicated? The minute one asshole decided his Christmas present to the world was a global pandemic? Fucking Amherst. We've contained that threat, but there's a bigger one on the horizon. I know. Whatever the true sons have been fighting. What Faye was helping them fight. What she was trying to warn us about. She figured out what was really going on and she tried to warn us. But we didn't get the message. She tried to give us a clue back at Coney Island and an ally. Where's Schaefer? Same place he always is. What's his status? Stable, but in a coma. Been like this for weeks. And we're just tube feeding our enemy. He's not our enemy. Not anymore. Manny, he's the key. She left us a key, and if we want to stop what's coming, we need to wake him up. So Schaefer is the key, he is the information that the Division need in order to fully understand what Natalia and McManus are up to. But like I said before, could this information not have been included with the rest of these Fei Lao comms? Maybe she didn't get around to it, or we're going to receive them later. It just seems odd that she would leave us half the story as part of a contingency plan with the comms, but leave the rest to sit with Schaefer. Isn't it interesting that after all this time we finally see Manny again? It really feels like it's been ages. It also seems very sus that he's been brought back for this. But perhaps this is because he's the last character we know of left in the White House. He's obviously been looking after the place, and that includes the overseeing of Schaefer, who remains unconscious. Perhaps he'll have a larger part to play in the coming seasons. So what do we now know from these insurance policy comms? Schaefer and Faye were working together. Barden was meant to be captured on Coney Island. McManus, the Secretary of Homeland Security, is working with Natalia and appears to be in control. He also has a unit of super elite soldiers called the Hunters. 
But other than that, we don't really know what they're up to. All of the focus seems to be on the Hunter program, but this alone can't be what they're so concerned about. There must be something more. Sure, they're tough, specialized units who seem to be quite adept at taking out division agents, but they must have a greater cause that they've been put in place for. They're really just a small group. In the greater scheme of things, with the rebuilding of the country and establishing a new world order, what is their purpose? Or maybe that's the whole point. They're there to remove the division, leaving the much larger force of Black Tusk to take control of the country. But if this is true, the division already don't seem like they're in much of a position to be able to stop the Black Tusk. Their numbers are low, and they are heavily divided. Much like General Anderson said, lone wolves. They're currently unequipped to be able to take on a well-coordinated nationwide attack from a considerably larger force. Going back to the same old question I've been asking for years, is this what Keener had seen coming? Was he trying to warn us of McManus this whole time? This was just a quick recap or overview of the comms we've received at the end of the manhunt. Real life has been throwing some interesting things my way as of lately, so this took a little longer than I would have liked to get out. I'm already planning on pulling this apart and digging a little deeper, but I needed a starting point. Another piece that I realized I really need to put together is some sort of character slash faction mind map that shows the crossover between each over the years. This season has added so much and referenced a lot of events from earlier that I think we could all use some sort of lore quick reference chart or guide. As always, thank you very much for your support. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!